All right, so let's talk about Hereditary, which just got screened in IMAX for the first time ever. This was actually after Hereditary had been out for six years now. And I think it's one of those films that is truly a pillar of horror because a lot of horror films that we saw come after Hereditary definitely inspired or in a way sort of saw it as a new way that you can tell a horror movie. And this was at a time as well when Hereditary first came out when A24 was just getting like their word out. They had already been established at this point, but they were really starting to become a household name and hereditary really pushed that forward so let's get into it before we do make sure you are subscribed to the channel and also commenting down below we will have a giveaway and to enter that giveaway you have to be subscribed and comment something down below in the comments whatever it is whether you like hereditary or hate it whatever that case may be comment down below and that gets you an entry but let's get right into hereditary six years after and why it continues to be such a great horror film and also let's talk about that ending so this film basically revolves around this family and you have this curse that keeps on getting passed down which of course the name hereditary fits so perfectly this is the curse of the demon Payman, who is a king of hell of sorts and Payman has been in this family for as long as the grandma has been alive the grandma was the first one that immediately started all of this and ultimately tried to pass it on to her husband because payment needs a male body. Grandpa kept telling everybody that the grandma was trying to put voices inside of them, people, souls, whatever the case may be. Everybody just assumed they were schizophrenic and ultimately they died. And this led to the grandma looking for another host now. But Annie, who is played by Tony Collette, ultimately decided they didn't want anything to do with the grandma. They were done with her. They cut off all communications for a bit. She went on to have her son, Peter. And the grandma was kind of upset about this because she needed a male host and Peter was right there, but she wasn't able to get to Peter because her and Annie hadn't been talking all these years. They ultimately fixed the relationship. They start talking again. And then Annie has a daughter, Harley, and this kind of upsets the grandma, but hey, whatever body we have right now, we'll take it. And it seems that the grandma put payment into Charlie's body, ritual feeding her giving her the sort of also enchanting sort of seeds and spices or whatever the case may be and that's shown throughout the film as well and this cult of payment has been keeping an eye on Charlie all this time in the family as well so that when the grandma ultimately passes away now they get even closer and they see them in the funeral and all of this the thing is Charlie is not a male body so they need to get payment into Peter and what they have to do is ultimately kill Charlie the way to do this however is through decapitation because the demon payment carries three heads and they need three heads in order to complete the ritual and well first head is going to be charlie's that they get ultimately we see the symbol of the cult throughout the film which is something that's very interesting on a rewatch as well on the pole the cult is all throughout as well as you can see they are they're stalking this family they're keeping them close making sure the ritual goes as planned ultimately annie is then sort of pushed to go to this grief counseling for her mother for her Charlie and this is where she meets this very mysterious woman who claims to have known the grandmother ultimately leads her to make a seance as well which pushes Annie as well into doing this seance which is going to sort of get her to talk to Charlie again and we see that this is not the case really this is just to get payment even stronger and ready by the end of the film we see that after Charlie's death of decapitation and this grief and trauma that has struck in this family that now we have Annie Annie on the verge of insanity because of this ultimately leading to Annie killing her husband by setting him ablaze and then going after Peter and this is where the cult is throughout the house now that Annie is possessed she is trying to get to Peter and the cult is all over the house and some of the creepiest imagery honestly also the imagery of Annie in the quarter just nightmare inducing we see as Peter ultimately tries to escape and then he witnesses as Annie decapitates herself before jumping out of the window and then ultimately it seems that Peter is so weak now and Annie's decapitated and they also found the decapitated body of the grandma giving you three heads Harley, Annie and the grandma. Eamon's ritual is fully complete and the impainment soul pretty much transfers to Peter's body now as we see them go up into the treehouse where they have everything ready. They have the statue of payment. They have the heads they have the cult members peter's wearing the crown and peter is the new payment and they all help payment at the end so pretty much that ending the whole film in itself we just saw a whole ritual take place we saw the decapitation of the heads that payment needed we saw the death of the family we saw the curse being passed down from one member to another ultimately leading
getting to it, going to the male host that Payment had been wanting from the beginning when the grandma was trying to get into the grandpa. And now the cult can go after the riches, right? The grandmother had started this cult, as we see through photos and everything beforehand and the text for Payment, in order to summon Payment so that Payment can grant these wishes, these sort of riches as well, and give you whatever it is you want, which I don't know what a decapitated grandma is going to do with it now. I, I, I don't know. I'm assuming the cult's going to benefit from it and this family just died or maybe in hell they'll get something i don't know i we don't go that far we just know that the cult achieved what they wanted a very very bleak ending honestly and you know the film in itself is in a way being also told as not just if you look at it in evil and supernatural way but also as if you want to make the film grounded and say that these are all hallucinations i think that the way that as a mental illness this trauma as well being passed down from one family member to another or generational you could say as well the trauma neglect all of that which are important things as well in my opinion to talk about because i think that with a film like hereditary what makes it so scary and just holds up so well all of these years later is that the horror in itself let's start there actually let's start with the horror because i think that the way that it showcased without these sudden jump scares or anything like that these cheap jump scares i like to call them sometimes fun house um type scares like you're in a haunted house right like it just pops up and then it's nothing, right? You see it and it's like, man. But I think what Hereditary it really creeps up on you because you see these moments, especially um, some key moments here, the one with Annie when she's like covered in gasoline and she's talking to Peter about how she never wanted him, how she was going to kill him. And Peter's remembering these moments as well. And it just makes you feel this sort of dread inside as you watch this family crumble and succumb to this grief, to this trauma. And you see these very ghastly and horrific imagery as well, because I think that what is done so well here is that it lingers sometimes on these moments one in specific is when we first see charlie's decapitated head just on the road covered in ants as well it's not like it's trying to be sort of in the dark or hidden or anything no it's full on in your face you're just seeing this and it feels so grotesque and so real and so just awful and that's what it makes you feel and i think that really elevates the horror a lot more when it comes to hereditary or there's these other moments as well in the film that are a little bit more subtle where you feel this sense of like what's going on here because I think the first time we ever watched Hereditary um, we felt this sort of sense of what is going to happen now the moment when Peter realizes what exactly happened to Charlie when she got decapitated by that pole and he's just sitting there in the car there's no score there's nothing it is quiet and he's just there and he goes to his room he lays down you immediately see when Annie is looking for Charlie goes to the car and finds the body and that sorrow cry that comes after and Peter's just there and you just feel like all these different emotions inside of you. Honestly, Ari Aster always is able to pull off these moments of sorrow so well that also are so horrific because of the way it happens. Something they do in Midsommar as well at the beginning of the film so effectively, which just leaves your body feeling this sort of sense of, man, do I feel horrible now watching all of this. And then you're laced with these very creepy imagery throughout the whole rest of the film with the cult members just smiling eerily. They're naked as well, which kind of throws you for a loop. And I think that's what Ari Aster does well. He makes you feel all these different things all at the same time. So it's horrific. It's just, uh, you know, it gives you a shiver. And I think that's what makes Hereditary so great, honestly, is that sense of so many emotions, so many different feelings. And there's not just one feeling that it's going to make you feel it makes you feel everything at the same time. And I think it's story itself. Like I said, it's a story about this family dealing with grief and this trauma. And it keeps going back and back to it. And you see that they're never able to fully resolve it. And it just continues to escalate to proportions where it's just going to blow. And it really does have these moments that you just wonder how much more can they take? And it really is a film that says a lot more is about to happen. I'm sorry. And so that's what I think makes Hereditary such a great film all of these years later and still one of the best horror films of all time. Because I always like to say, and I keep on saying it, I'm wearing a shirt that 
is another example of this. But what makes a great horror film is not how scary something looks. It's not exactly the jump scares because you will not be afraid of that after. It's these moments that will linger in your brain because you think of this tragedy that just unfolded to this family. You watched it all happen. And there's these moments that are so, so incredibly crafted from Annie decapitating herself to the head coming off of Charlie and just being there on the road to the cult members in the dark in the corner that when you're laying there night after watching this and you're just trying to go to sleep, these images pop up and it's just like, oh, like, I think that is what makes Hereditary such a great horror and any horror in general. Just like The Exorcist, a film that is tragic because you see this family going through all of this. The daughter and the mother just want their relationship back. But there's this very evil that is keeping them from having that relationship. And so I do want to talk more about this film in itself and A24 as a company. Because I think that this is definitely one of those films that A24 really owes a lot to. And I'll be talking more about that in another video. But, but let me know your thoughts and your opinions on Hereditary. Did you watch it again? In, in IMAX. What did you think about it? I didn't get the chance to watch it because I went to go watch the Challenger screening, but I'm very curious. Like, did you pick up anything else while on your rewatch in IMAX? A bigger screen, of course, you're going to see a lot more, but what did you pick up from it? Also the sound. I think that there was something to it as well, probably. So let me know your thoughts on it. If you watched it, I'm very curious to know what you all think about it. But as always, that is going to do it for me. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. What do you think about Hereditary? I already made a ton of any explains. I've done videos videos on the symbolism and stuff like that. If y'all want a whole video like that, I would definitely do it again because I wasn't really happy with the first one I did all those years ago, but I would definitely be open to talking more in depth about it. We could do it live or something like that. Let me know. I'm very curious because I'm planning on revisiting a ton of my older videos and redoing them better. So that's something that I'm definitely looking into. But yeah, I really love Hereditary. Let me know what you think about it and make sure you follow us. Make sure you're subscribed and commenting down below to enter into our giveaway. Follow us on our social medias, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all that good stuff. On Instagram, we're going to be having a giveaway. Once we reach 100 subscribers, followers, I'll let you know about that over there. So make sure you follow us there. But we also have our giveaway here. So make sure you enter. And as always, I'll see all of you next time. Stay safe. Stay positive.